So I caved and I bought a Quest 3. It's Meta's latest virtual reality headset offering that features standalone wireless virtual reality gaming and I started putting it through its paces. It comes with mixed reality, which now means you can manipulate virtual objects in the real world using full color pass through so that you can see the environment around you and the game takes place in your space. This means that I can play a game like FPS enhanced reality in mixed reality in my own home and clear my house. I also tested the Quest 3 with some PC VR content. And while it doesn't work as seamlessly as something like the Valve Index, it's still an excellent headset that does the job just fine as shown in some of this VTOL VR gameplay, which I captured using the virtual desktop and I was playing wirelessly, com completely untethered from my PC. But what most people purchase a Quest for is the standalone VR content. And I immediately went shopping for the best FPS games on the market. And I stumbled into Pavlov Shack. Pavlov is already a renowned game on PC VR, probably the most popular and highest per capita player base across PC VR first person shooters. Pavlov Shack promises that same type of gameplay in a native standalone version. I was surprised to learn that it actually has support for all the custom content that players build for Pavlov. So there's custom maps, even something as cool as the Fairfax Residence from the renowned SWAT 4 game. So you can drop that into Pavlov Shack and play zombies, search and destroy, or set up custom scenarios with your friends. I was also impressed with the visual fidelity of the game. It doesn't look quite as good as PC VR, but damn if it doesn't come close and it is perfectly acceptable in its quality levels and it runs smooth and seamlessly. The weapon interactions feel top notch, the shoot house is extremely satisfying, and the gameplay is simply fun. This is a casual frag fest that takes me back to the golden age of gaming when I was a kid. But what I really appreciated about Pavlov Shack and what I wanted to show off to you guys is how you can actually apply some real world tactics to have some success in the game. And I guess there's a couple reasons behind it. One of them is that some of these custom maps are large enough that you actually have maneuver space. It's not just corner fights and head peaks where whoever has the fastest reflexes and the best aim wins. And instead, positioning actually does matter. And the other reason is because some of these kids are so wild, they just don't care if they die. So they behave like absolute mad lads and sprint to the open and run around with no situational awareness. Oh God! Uh, oh, not! Nah, hang on, hang on! The Black Ops bitch! Yep. Turning. Got one, got one, got one. Alright, we're brace for impact. Got him. I did the truck. And exactly that phenomenon is what I want to showcase to you guys today. So I was driving a pickup truck with four of my homies towards the enemy base, and naturally on our route there, we encountered a bit of a problem. That problem was the entire enemy team had set up a fortification in the center of the map, separating the two spawn points on some of the most dominating terrain on the map. There's some buildings there, and really they just had numbers, and numbers such that we couldn't overcome them. When we first saw him, I figured the right thing to do was to just, you know, barrel in head first. And while that resulted in a glorious crash and a nice little gunfight, it didn't exactly prove to be successful. But what I also saw was the enemy had a truckload of infantry loaded up and getting ready to come towards our spawn. So knowing that, instead of driving straight out into their face, I patrolled out by myself on foot and I lied in wait. I killed three of the passengers who I assumed had dismounted from a vehicle, but I know that vehicle can hold four passengers, so I was kind of waiting to see if there might be a fourth. After tagging up the fourth dude, I reloaded and I moved out on foot, trying to figure out who might be behind this fire team. 
as I stalked up, I noticed that they had dismounted their vehicle. They were trying to be tactical. You know, they were trying to be sneaky. They turned the car off. They parked it and they moved out on foot. They just didn't account for me in the woods that was hiding to their front. So I jumped in their truck, stole it, and I figured, you know, let's go take a peek back at that center area and see if that entire enemy team is still hanging out over there. And sure enough, well, they were. I pulled up alongside it across the road, outside of small arms range, or at least effective small arms range in this VR game. And as I passed it, I started taking fire, and you can hear it there in the background. Three or four people actually shooting at the truck. So I drove past, they assumed that I was probably pushing towards their spawn to try and set up a camping position or something, but instead I ditched the truck and again dismounted and I stalked up on foot. I took it really slow here, slowed down quite a bit, kept bushes and trees in between me and the dudes that I was stalking up on. And as I approached, I started to see some people moving around and then I saw a vehicle drive by. This guy was ferrying troops back and forth from the spawn to that center outpost. And he'd been making these runs constantly. Remember, I'm shooting this AK-12 suppressed from range. It's really difficult to hear from that range where you're being shot at from. So he wasn't able to figure out where I was. After he passed and he was back at the spawn loading up with more dudes, I ran across the street and I set up on the other side of the road. I put my back on towards the street because I didn't want that vehicle to see me as he passed me. And instead, now my front is towards the village. And I hear that vehicle drive by. But instead of shooting this time, I saw he had at least two with him. I figured I'd wait it out and see who else comes. Sure enough, another ATV came by. He also had one passenger with him. He took the time to put a mine on the road, but now I know I'm outnumbered at least four or five to one. I heard that ATV start up and then drive away again. And I figured I could wait here and see if anyone else was able to come up on foot or if that vehicle was gonna go back to their spawn and grab more infantry to bring to the center. Sure enough, he does, and that's when I finally see my opportunity. I quietly drop both of the dudes who are in that vehicle, and then I'm thinking maybe I'm compromised at this point, maybe not, but I'm too afraid to push towards the objective by myself. I definitely need more buddies if I was going to do any sort of assault. So my best opportunity here, my best shot at being successful in putting a dent into the enemy team is to just go full on bush wookie. So I creep up next to this tree, climb just a tad higher on it, and I hide in this bush. And sure enough, more enemy arrives. We have a truckload of infantry show up first, and then the infantry starts to pour out. As I watch the infantry approach, I make sure they get nice and close before I initiate. It seems like the entire enemy team was dismounted and trying to push up to that center village and I was the only thing standing between them and that destination. But it took them quite a while to figure out where I was engaging them from. I'd already killed five or six individuals before I took that first hit. Once I was compromised, I was like, all right, it's time, uh, time to get some cover. The jig is up. So I got down behind that tree, started fighting from cover. Surprisingly, I'm still getting pushed here, but I'm able to slay a couple more dudes before I end up going down myself. At least at this point, they're starting to suppress me so they can maneuver a little bit. That right side's completely off limits. Now I'm taking hits on the left side. Seeing if I can climb the tree. I can't. Figure, screw it. We'll chuck a grenade. They know I'm here. Still tag up one more dude before finally taking the fatal hit from the front. But now I understand the enemy's general disposition of what their plan is. So I go back to base, I fill up with the rest of the dudes, grab a truck full of infantry, and then we push all the way towards the enemy base. We've only got two or three minutes left in the round at this point, and we set up shop right on the outskirts to engage them as they approach.
they got fucked up. Now at this point, it's four of us versus their entire team of ten or so. And things get hairy. There's only short breaks in the fighting. They just keep pouring out of their spawn one after another, but they're running through the open and not really taking the time to maneuver, which allows us fighting from cover and concealment to just drop them as they approach. Yep, they're on the roof. Anchor. You gotta give it up to my teammates here, actually talking about where the enemy is pushing from, communicating effectively. There's only a minute or two left in the round at this point, and we've still got infantry pushing us heavily. They reposition the truck so my two buddies can actually fight from cover behind the truck, which is a great move. But now they absolutely know where we're located, and man, they start pouring it on us. They start putting effective fire on us. My right side is basically sealed off at this point. It's really risky for me to expose. Maybe not the best smoke placement here by my teammate, but you know, they were under effective fire. They just needed something to prevent the enemy from accurately engaging. And it accomplished that, unfortunately, allowed the enemy to seconds. move as well. Fucking I'm With only 20 ass. seconds left in the round. We just lay down fire and burn it down until the map ends. Still getting a few kills before the round finally completes. Pavlov Shack is in a beta phase right now over on the Quest App Lab. You can play it on the Quest 2, you can play it on the Quest 3. It's actually a fantastic little game and something that I look forward to getting my buddies involved with so that we can enjoy some custom scenarios. All of this footage that you guys saw today was recorded natively on the Quest headset. I didn't even intend to share it with you, but I just really enjoyed this sequence and figured it was worth sharing on the channel. But keep in mind, this was just captured on board the headset. This is exactly what I was seeing. So a pretty high quality first person perspective in a standalone headset. Kudos to Meta for making a great device and kudos to the team over at Pavlov for making it available on standalone devices. Let me know what you guys thought about today's video about the Quest 3, your intentions with respect to it. I'm Control Pairs. This has been Pavlov Shack Beta and I will see you guys in the next one.